How many times, have you looked at bikes like this one, and thought something like, it looks good, it looks fast, but it doesn't mean anything to me. I bet this statement, sounds quite familiar to many of you. On the other hand, what do you think when you see one of these? I'm sure most would say, that's the one. Modern. Classic. Fast enough. Full of character. And personality. In other words, it had everything to be the best selling motorcycle in the world. Right? Unfortunately, things are not that simple. And it is precisely at this point, that today's project, is extremely interesting. And according to the builder, it is still a work in progress. Welcome, to Racer TV. Before you judge this machine, allow me to explain a few things. This Ducati, is not exactly the work of a professional builder. But he could be a professional, if he wanted to. It is not prepared, to be ridden on public roads. But it could, if the builder also wanted to. All this means, the builder and the owner of this cool project, are the exact same person. His name is Casper, and he builds custom bikes as a hobby, under the moniker of Calapaya Garage, in Estonia. One of the things I admire on this Casper's work, is that he built it with some contradictions, in order to play with the senses, of those who see it. In other words, it carries a certain, I don't give a damn atmosphere. And I like that. Especially when I look at this drag tire. What if I told you, that Casper shaped this tire, by doing this. I am just kidding. But here is the story of the project. For the past decade, Casper has been building some custom bikes as a hobby. But this one, is his personal project. He built it along six years, and with no restraints. All he had, was a damaged 749S model, and a lot of freedom, to modify it. Casper always wanted a Ducati Sport Classic. But he also liked, the cool sultans of sprint drag bikes, that he saw at the bike shed show. And so he decided to combine these two completely opposite things, in one single project. A very strange combination for sure. But somehow, it looks very cool. As you see on this transition, the rear wheel, is now much further from the engine. I admit that for some, this new wheelbase, may seem too bold. But personally, I think the original swing arm would be too short, for this large fairing. The new mono swing arm, came from AMV Agus to Brutale, which is about 10 centimeters longer, than the original one. But to keep everything proportionate, Casper opted for a large rear end. But I will explain this in a few minutes. The most obvious sections, that are still original from the Dono motorcycle, are the trellis frame, fuel tank, and the engine. And about this last one, I must say that it is now very far, from the factory original state. Casper did everything he could, to increase horsepower. It has now sports cylinder heads, lighter rods, a lightened flywheel, 12-point injectors, slipper clutch, and a programmable ECU, with launch control. 
The exhaust pipes are obviously custom made. Using also an aftermarket muffler, which is indeed a very beautiful item. The front forks came from the Aprilia RSV, but using custom made triple trees. Casper also developed this structure to hold one of the two radiators, an expansion tank, speedometer, headlight, and also the fairing. Speaking of it, the fairing came straight from a Ducati Paul Smart Limited Edition. But it required some adjustments to fit on the project. Another interesting detail, is this headlight cover, giving a more racing look, whenever necessary. This rear section, is definitely the most surprising part of the project. Notice how slick and clean it is. Almost as if it was floating. And the connection with the fuel tank, is absolutely impeccable. The most interesting, is that you don't see any structure, supporting this section. Casper made this, by first hand shaping a prototype mold. Then, after a 3D scan, he created the entire art shell from fiberglass, and also the entire subframe, made on a CNC cutter machine. This means the subframe structure, is entirely hidden inside this fiberglass section. And even more impressive, there is not one single screw visible, around the entire rear section. A very impressive work indeed. The color combination, is also a very tasteful choice. Something tells me, that Casper took some inspiration, from his bell bullet helmet. And I'm glad he did that. Because it looks absolutely beautiful. Almost too beautiful, to be on a sprint racer's competition. But let's now talk about the project's proportions. I know there are some elements, which seem out of the ideal size. At first glance, the rear section and fairing look okay. But the gas tank seems small, and the fairing a bit too low. I tried to solve this on Photoshop, and it seems that by rising the fairing, it would look better. But with a bigger fuel tank, it didn't work as I expected. In a way, I think I am being too picky. Because all this is only visible from the side profile. And when Casper is seated on, or riding it, it looks simply perfect. So, let's now clarify the enigmatic Kajiva letterings, which I'm sure you are curious about. As you probably know, Kajiva used to be owner of Ducati, between 1985 to 96. According to Casper, while he was working on the engine, he noticed there were more Kajivu Elephant logos on the castings, than Ducati logos. Which is comically strange. And so he decided to extend the joke, all the way to the fuel tank. As Casper also said, this bike is obviously not a daily commuter, but it can ride. It's not an actual drag motorcycle, but it has potential. It's not furniture, but it looks good. And so it's a work in progress, to figure out what he will do with it. Thank you, for watching Racer TV. And as always, I hope to see you on the next video.